trying to think about what to do for the demo, you know, and I, I wanted to, tr I always like to challenge myself, come up with something new. Um, so last week, I uh, was on a family vacation. We went up to West Virginia and skiing, and hey, I didn't break anything, so I feel pretty good about that. <laughs> and um, so ultimately, though, uh, on the way home, um, we passed by this train. Uh, it's the CAS uh, sightseeing train. It's called CASS, if you want to look it up. But uh, West Virginia, it's a uh, it's a day trip. So you go out for like it's a it's like a six to eight hour trip. You go out on it. It uh, goes through the mountains of West Virginia. They stop on one end. They have lunch and they come back. And this steam train is amazing. It's so gorgeous. And come to find out, they have like six of them, and they rotate through which one. So you never you don't see the same one over and over again. Um, but the the smells the textures the atmosphere of it was just really intense um and if you've never been close to a steam train um it's a whole experience all by itself it's not even it's like today we have diesel electric that's what all our trains are if you're if you're not familiar what with is going to make this a little bit different is i'm not going to look at the reference at all i'm just gonna paint yesterday i basically drew this out it has a little bit of masking material on it because there's a few uh, highlights that i wanted to preserve on it and so we're just going to go ahead and and jump into it most of this i'm going to do with flats how many of you paint with flats i got a little bit of pool of water uh i'm going to go for a little bit of uh, uh ultramarine blue maybe put in a little bit of we're not. We're doing the sky. We're not. We're not. We're going to keep the alizarin out of the sky. So, let's talk clouds. I mean, there's a lot of different ways of doing clouds. Uh, I have been uh, experimenting with various things, but one of my favorite things to do with clouds is uh, paper towel. How many of you just do paper towel clouds? Yep. yep. Works great. I don't care so much about drips. They don't bother me. Um, how many of you work at an angle? Yes. Or work flat? Yeah. I work at a pretty steep angle. This is a little steeper than I normally go with. And the only reason why I'm cutting in around this train is because I, I'm going to try and paint the whole thing here. And normally I would paint the sky in and then come back. And um, I would... Uh, I would... Uh, paint right over it but today I'm going to do a little bit of cutting in because uh, I want to try and get as much done today as I can. Where's your light coming from? My light is from over on this side okay. so it will be it will be coming from the left. So I see the steam already. It looks like it would be the steam pump. It's a habit of steam. Yeah. It is. Let's do a cloud. How's that? Blue is always one of those things like it's not blue enough, it's not blue enough, it's not blue enough, it's too blue. Yeah. <laughs> I'll get a bit of a color shift, but the other thing about this is I kind of want to keep it a little loose. I don't want it to be super tight. Do you ever like your sky color, let it bleed into your train? I do. Okay. Um, Normally I would I wouldn't have and in fact I'm going to do a little bit here but normally I wouldn't have much of a problem with it except that I want to keep painting and I don't want to take a lot of time to let it dry mm -hmm. so we'll, we'll we'll mess around a little bit with it. Kind of paper you have This is on arches. It's a just a block and I haven't taken it off the block or anything. 
It's cold press. I do all cold press. I either do cold press or rough. I really like rough. Uh, if you've never tried it, like I used to be very, just, I've never, I mean, for probably 20 years, I did nothing but high press. And um, I went ahead and tried some cold press and I love, I love the, the um, blending you get with it. I love the, the gradations you can get with it. They're all pretty amazing. Um, so I think uh, right now, I think um, you get a lot more uh, variation with, with uh, and you get a lot of things out of doing um, that you can't get any other way. Texture. Thank you, texture. That's what I was after. We're gonna put a little trees in here. Happy ones? They could be happy. You want them to be happy? They will be happy. We're gonna go for a little, uh, we're gonna go for a little lizard crimson. Oh my. Look at that. I think we're gonna, you know, we'll put some over here. Not bad. So I'm painting with a one inch flat, in case you're curious. And I don't know why, but I'm always holding something in my left hand that I never use. <laughs> I, I just don't know. And then I'll do this. Where, where's my paper towel? Where's my paper? <laughs> like, I just had it here a minute ago. What did I do with that paper towel? Yeah. I, was gonna say, I also dip my brush in my water that I'm drinking. I've done that. <laughs> How many of you have drank watercolor, watercolor water? Yeah. yeah. I mean, that coffee doesn't taste right. <laughs> yeah, because I clean at 4 30 in the morning when the house is sleeping. And, yeah. Yeah. And the asshole of the lizard crimson, crimson taste to it. Yeah. Yeah. Better than the cat name. You get better than the cat name. Oh, that's true. That's true. So, one of the things that um, for a long time when I was painting, I always went just very strictly did my did my lights, did my midtones, did my darks. Lately, I'm doing it in reverse. If you look at the train that I have out in the gallery out here, I painted all the darks first, every bit of it, and then I went back over it with color. And uh, it was it was pretty amazing how fast it came together. I really liked it. So now we're going to go in with the little Payne's Gray. And I don't want too dark. Uh, I'm going in with what, what's going to be more or less my highlights. Are you adding color to the Payne's Gray or just using Payne's Gray? I will, I will dab a little bit in here and there to give some highlights. Like I just pulled in some green and some, some of the alizarin crimson that I already have puddled on the table. Um, I'm not really trying to make it green or alizarin crimson. I just want some, right. I want, some, I just want some of those tones in there. Yeah.
How many of you have done a grisaille painting? Do you know what I mean? No. A, a grisaille is just a black and white painting. Oh. Yeah. It, and and you can basically all it is is your your you're painting your values. That's it. Just going for your values. I'm curious how many people have done a mandala painting. You have. What is that? A painting of a mandala. A what is it now? I'm, I'm listening. But you count the number of strokes. Count the number of strokes. Hundred strokes. Hmm. It's kind of like a meditation. <coughs> that would take some work. <laughs> you do what? <laughs> what? Take it to the river and throw it in. Tear it up and throw it in the river. Sounds like a demo. Yeah, that, that could happen to this. You never know. Depends on how it goes today. Sometimes I do a value study before I do a bigger one. Yeah, I, I do too. Um, and to be honest with you, that's what this would be to me, is uh, I'll end up using it kind of as a, a study piece, and if I like it, I'll make a bigger one. Yeah, so uh, there's like basically two types of steam engines that they uh, they they have, and um, the I can't remember what their names are to be honest, um, but they're uh, is it the shape of the uh, is it the stack? No, it's the manufacturer. It's who made it. Yeah. Yeah. So, when you say that the same different manufacturer, but they look similar, or they look different? They look pretty similar. I mean, if you didn't, if you weren't like comparing them side by side, you probably you may not notice, especially if you're not a train person. I am not a big train person. I just think that they make great painting topics. So I don't know everything there is to know about trains, um, but. Uh, I like mechanical things. I like uh, industrial things. I like, you know, ships, trains, cars, you know, all those things. And um, I mean, I think uh, there is something to be said for if you if you are a figure painter, try doing a, a structural piece. Try doing a building. If you're if you're somebody who does nothing but um, landscapes, try doing a portrait. And I think what it does is it helps inform your, one thing informs another, informs another. Um, and you'll get better all the way around. You have a very steady hand like that big, uh, that big... Yeah, and I'm painting at an angle I don't typically paint at. <laughs> this is, trust me, this is not how I typically paint. <clears throat> I'm sorry? What was that? I couldn't hear you. You're in a gap. In a gap? Between image and abstract. Figurative. Landscape. Something new is going to happen. <laughs> and something new is, is usually good. You know, I mean, I've tried a lot of different things. And, and, and I'm like, um, when I was doing the Norfolk Drawing Club regularly, I would go in there and try to do a whole finger painting with a square brush. And if you've, I mean, if, now I will tell you what that does is it helps loosen you up. Yeah. And it helps, it helps you become a little more expressive in a way 
that you probably would not have been before. And in this case, like I'm bleeding out, I see a lot of areas here where it could be better. You know what though? I want this painting to be somewhat loose and somewhat uh, expressive, right? So all of that is good to me right now. I'm happy with it. I don't want it to be, you know, an, a photograph of, of this train. I want it to be my interpretation of it. And that's what we should kind of aim for, really, is not, if, if people wanted a photograph, they can use their camera. But if they want a painting, then it has to have something of the artist in it that makes it appealing. But I, I would add to that and say, as an artist, I have learned my, that um, we, the growth happens when you're out of your comfort zone. Mm -hmm. You will do the same thing over and over and over again as an artist, and you'll wonder why you're not getting yeah. a different result. Why isn't this getting better? Yeah. I'm practicing. I'm putting all this time in. I got 10,000 hours in. Why didn't this get better? And it's because you did 10,000 hours of the same exact thing. You need, you, need to, uh, you need to try new things. And that's why, you know, I mean, this, this is true for a lot of different things in life. But, um, but uh, you know, uh, as an artist, I think one of the things we don't do enough is play. I don't think we do enough experimentation. I was doing a, I was doing a portrait today, just like a shield's doing a portrait yeah. today right now. I was doing that a year ago, and now they're all popping up on my, uh, <laughs> on my memories yeah. stuff, like, yeah. and you know, I will tell you they weren't great. Uh, there was nothing, you know, but they were. I learned a lot, and my portraits got better and better and better. And I can see a shield's getting better and better and better. I could see him trying different things and experimenting a bit. And, Two ballerinas posing, yeah, and we all sat, sat around. Hmm. Yes, and, and they started out with like one minute poses, yeah. and then they ended up with it kind of increased to 20 minute and then 30 minute. That's how they normally do it at like the uh, the Norfolk Drawing Group. Is they'll start off with if you have you ever done um, like just one minute. Figure yeah. drawing, yeah. man, that 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 will blow your mind the first time you try it. <laughs> That's what we do. Yeah, it kind of surprised me because I didn't know what to expect. So I'm sitting there watching them, and I'm getting ready to draw, and all of a sudden they change. I'm like, whoop, oh, gotta change tactics here. Yeah, that happened to me too. Yeah, you'll get you'll get an arm. Oh, yeah, I got an arm. <laughs> Yeah, I've I have one in my bag right there. But do you, do you use, use it? it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, smarty pants. Um, I do try to use all my. Like I said, sometimes I'll be like, oh, I haven't done this in a while. Let me try that. I'm sitting here, and you are such a technician and it is it is already taking form and looking beautiful my question to you would be if you want to try something new drop some vibrant colors in hey you know what i've got some alizarin crimson right here <laughs> let's throw some of that in here oh but look at that maybe some teal some teal some teal, some ultramarine blue, some... Well, and, and to be honest with you, um, so in the Grisai process, I'm just looking to get a black and white version. And what I was going to show you was, at the end of it, now I can take 
whatever color I want and throw yeah, into it. And it's right. amazing the transition that will happen just in a matter of seconds right at the very end yeah. where you're dealing with basically a black and white painting and then I could I could pretty much drop whatever color I want on top of it. And it's pretty amazing how well it will... On top it, of it? It reads, yes, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, so if I just finish this, I mean, obviously I've already put some other colors in here. Oh, obviously I messed you up. No, 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 you're fine. <laughs> you're fine. But... If I if I came in here and I decided I want to um, just paint this all black and white to begin with, and then drop those colors in, they will play almost like they you know like like I painted it with the color first. Grisai. Don't ask me. How do I not know? What G R I S Grisai. Grisai. Oh, French. I can buy a tool. G R I S A I L L E. I speak just enough French to piss off a Frenchman, <laughs> which amazingly is not, not much at all. Yeah, so if you go and you look at the train painting out in the uh, in the foyer or in the gallery, main gallery, that's how I did it. I painted it all. All the black and white was painted first, and then the color was done on top of that. Okay, cool. Versailles and its expressive power. <laughs> Somebody's reading ahead. Oh, I'm checking up. So how much time do we got? Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Three ten. Well, three ten. And Carrie, when you get to a stopping point, I need to sneak by. I have to go pick up my mother for the dinner. Anytime you're ready, just come on up. Thank you for coming. Yeah, bye -bye. Bye -bye. Is that your purse? No, this is mine. Oh, okay. Yeah. I was trying to get all way in. Can we to see how that works out? Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yep, yeah, come on. I'll paint from this side. <laughs> Upside down and backwards with my left hand now. <laughs> How many of you use a paper towel as a painting instrument? Yep. Yes. I do it a lot. Is really starting to pump with your darker balance that you put in. Yeah, it'll start. Uh, it'll start coming together. Do you paint all the time, or do you have a job outside of painting? I am Comnav Surflance Force Training Officer for the Navy. I write all the training schedules for all the ships on the East Coast. So I work a full-time job. I babysit two grandchildren uh, three days a week. Um, I have a wife who has a honey-do list taller than me. And uh, When do you find that you're in the most effective edge of painting? When I'm busy. Busy. No, I, I, I have a theory on that, and that is uh, you want to get something done, give it to a busy man. Yep. Um, I think when we're not busy, we make up reasons why we can't do something. Oh, yeah. And... And we look for 
we look for stuff, you know, well, I can't do that. Um, now, I will say, sometimes I overextend. But um, I get a lot more done. Do your grandchildren paint? No. They make a mess. <laughs> um, and they are so not impressed with my paintings. Uh, they are, uh, let's see, I've got a six-year-old, a five-year-old, a three-year-old, and a two-year-old. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Have you painted this before? Nope. And, and you're not looking at the picture? I don't you have a picture. Have, you just have it in your mind. Just have it in my head. Like. Okay. Yeah. Of course, you have a drawing, but that's, <laughs> it's not that easy to figure out all the lights and darks. I am just going for it. <laughs> And to be honest with you, I, I kind of find that a lot of times when I'm painting, even when I'm painting something that I have a reference photo for, I don't look at it a lot. Or I'll paint a lot and realize I haven't looked at it in a long time. Um, not, not so much because I, I could, but um, I think uh, I have a vision about kind of where I want to go with it, if that makes sense. And sometimes it doesn't come out. Sometimes it doesn't work. Sometimes it does. Sometimes. I'm so glad I found this group. This, this is the, you know, <laughs> we are glad you found us too. So what do you do with ones that don't turn out? <clears throat> um. I will, I will, I have a stack of, of paintings that, um, that I think were failures, <laughs> but I will say I go back and I look at them and sometimes they're way better than I thought they were when I initially looked at them. Or usually you can do something with them to make them after you've thought about it for a while. But I'm also not trying to force it. You know, I, I just, if it, sometimes it's just a matter of recognizing what went wrong. And I think that, like, you don't grow with success. You grow with failure. And at least I don't. You know, I can't speak for everybody. Jerry, that, that feels like it's glowing back here. That's what I was going for. <laughs> Good job. That's, that's, uh. I want this kind of dark.
Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Pretty awesome for 45 minutes. Yeah, <laughs> Still a little bit more to go. I'll uh, wait till it dries, take the mask, you know. So check in with me later and get the the rest of the video.